Michael Novak, the Jewett Chair at the American Enterprise Institute, Washington, D.C. It's a two-sided answer I want to give. Uh, no, it, uh, commerce does not corrupt morals. On the contrary, it strengthens moral, morals better than the alternatives. In Eastern Europe, people have discovered in the shift from socialism that a, a, a more um, creative and dynamic economy requires more of them, requires more, more sacrifice, more initiative, more foresight, harder work. Um, it, it, it makes higher moral demands on them. It demands more respect for law. And this is the sort of thing the founders anticipated and, and, and wrote about. Commerce has a couple other values. It's intimately linked to law. It can't function. You can't send trading ships across the world to the far side of the world without contracts ready to be observed. It's too big an expense. Um, uh, commerce and law go together. Commerce also tends to strengthen patience, um, the ability to live with small gains. Britain in the 19th century had, a, uh, on average, about a percent and a half growth a year. And that was the first breakthrough in progress, what we call, what we call modern progress, economic progress. Um, and daily wages and daily um, welfare increased by something like 1,600% in the course of that uh, 100 years. The downside is that what Lincoln called, the Abraham Lincoln called the silent artillery of time. Uh, what early generations sacrifice for and have vision for and work for, and they work too hard to enjoy much of it, um, their children try to emulate, um, but their grandchildren often want to get away from. Um, hear different music on the wind and and, um, and, and uh, prefer not to work so hard, prefer not so strict a life, not so demanding a life, uh, prefer a more uh, enjoyable, freer life. And there, there comes, uh, in, in the wake of all that, uh, very quickly a kind of decadence in societies, a, 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 a decline in foresight, willingness to work, uh, concern about the future rather than the present. And uh, it's what Daniel Bell calls the cultural contradictions of capitalism. Its very success makes young people take it all for granted and be willing to throw it away, um, treat it too cheaply. If this is localized, uh, as I say, it's a very small proportion. Trouble is it's mixed in and derivatives and other bundling effects of sort of too bright, uh, uh, that is, uh, traders in well, Wall Street who are much too bright uh, for their own good and for the good of the country. And now it's very hard to locate where those bad mortgages are. They're bundled in with other things. That's the noxious effect. It, this may pass very quickly. Uh, it's a terrific investment opportunity. Um, uh, I don't know when the bottom will be reached, but uh, on the way down and as far down as we've come, it's, uh, it's amazing the values that are available if, if people have any cash. The great danger that we face, we learned, was an international form of terrorism, um, non-state, not identified with the state, but linked to states. That is to say, we didn't have a clear enemy to uh, face. There wasn't any one place to threaten, as we had done in the uh, mutual assured destruction in the uh, getting through the, the long, uh, difficult Cold War period. Um, and one reason for that is there's an enormous number of young males in uh, Arab societies particularly and in Muslim societies around the world who have no place to go for jobs, even if they have education, as many of the bombers of uh, September 11, 2001 had uh, master's degrees and, 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 and other degrees. They weren't underprivileged at all. But there were so few opportunities for them. Um, Therefore, it seemed to me early on that the best thing that could happen is if somewhere in the Middle East, the most um, unsettled part of the world, with an enormous amount of suffering over the last 50 years, almost everybody there living under the most, uh, well, not the most extreme, but under extreme forms of uh, tyranny from religious police as well as security police and uh, secret police, um, uh, would be if somehow in that part of the world the movement got started toward more commercial republics. Uh, those countries have always been good in commerce, but getting commerce free from the state, undirected by the state or the theocracy, 
and getting the uh, processes of democratic institutions and above all the protection of rights going um, could result in societies with much more to offer their young people, creative things to do, not a destructive uh, revolution bent on tearing down other societies. So that seemed to me to be the really creative um, uh, direction to take. And uh, there's a good chance this may come off in Iraq. There's a chance it may not, but it was a, an opportunity. I, I argued right from the very beginning that maybe there was a 40% chance of succeeding, um, but 40% was too high a possibility to waste. Uh, we, we had to get the momentum going in a different direction in that part of the world.